Um, okay, so the question is uh, how to write an interpreter, uh, I mean, uh, um, an interpreter of a kind of byte codes uh, in Java. There is a lot of uh, uh, literature on how to write it in C with a lot of, uh, you have even an uh, extension of uh, GCC, especially uh, to write this kind of interpreter. The question is how to write something like this in, in Java. So it was the question of Charles Nutter yesterday. So basically I have a language like this, it's just an array of int and I want to interpret it the fastest I can. Um, usually it's very slow to try to do this because you have a big switch and basically a big switch, um, basically the J doesn't like big switch uh, the register allocator technically doesn't like a big switch. If you write uh, your evaluator uh, to use uh, a no, uh, an, uh, an object-oriented way to do the thing, which is for each uh, code, I will write a class and have an, uh, an eval, eval methods, it will be far faster, which is something surprising because uh, the JIT is able to uh, inline between the different evil. Um, it's true if at the end of one instruction, you insert uh, a, a dispatch to the next instruction. If you do a loop, it will not be fast. But if at each, uh, just after the code uh, that do the, um, the uh, the things for an opt-code, you do the dispatch to the next instruction, it will be fast. So, um, the, the main idea here is to do exactly the same thing. I try to find my, yeah, my instruction. So basically, the idea is to do exactly the same thing, but, um, uh, instead of using the uh, classical Java dispatch to use invoke dynamic, technically you can't write invoke dynamic in Java, but you can use method handles and have method handles that are static final, which basically for the JIT is exactly the same thing. So for, for const, you will have the instruction that does const and at the end, you dispatch to the next uh, instruction. And um, what you want is a kind of uh, threaded interpreter, which is what you want is that this invoke exact uh, to be seen by the JIT as um, uh, um, as a constant, and so the, dis, the, the JIT will inline um, the, the next instruction and so on until you have a kind of trace of the instruction. It should be full, fully dynamic, so it will depend on the program you run. Uh, so basically the way you do that in, uh, in Java is to create a uh, kind of inlining cache. We have a mutable call site here, and you call this method, and basically what this method does is to install a kind of guard wave test that uh, remember the next instruction, and basically it's, it's an inlining cache. But instead of uh, uh, taking a look to the reserver class, it take a look at the, the number of the instruction. And so if you run it, if you run it, <laughs> uh, um, and take a look to the trace that you have, you have trace like this. I think, yeah, 
Uh, you have trees like this, which are the trees that are generated. You have exactly the same kind of trace with method under, uh, which means that the, the JIT is able to see, um, uh, I mean, a trace of the different opcode and optimize them. <laughs> so you want the assembly code. Don't move. I have it. <laughs> And, 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 and you will see things, oh, it's perhaps a little big, but yeah. You will things, you have traced like this. Ah, I don't know if, no, it's called Q. It's the main issue with assembly code. You have a lot of code in it. And I try to find a trace that see that you have several um, code that, well, I can't find it, but you, you will find a trace that see that you have the different uh, opcode that follow uh, each other. That's all. Thank you.